so welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing okay. I just wanted to start this video by wishing each and every one of you a happy new year. I know I did post a video last week which would have been like the 1st of January but that video was filmed in December so I actually haven't spoke to you guys in the new year so yes I am wishing you all a happy new year. I know at the minute especially in the UK we're all back into lockdowns and everything like that again and I mean already 2021 is feeling kind of similar to 2020 so I'm just sending all those positive vibes and I'm also just like thinking of all of you because I know it can just feel like life's a little heavy again so if you're struggling in any way I honestly am sending you so much love look you have got through this all before and I am pretty damn sure you will get through this all again so yes just a happy new year to each and every one of you let's smash 2021 and make it a freaking good year anyway let's get into this video got my cup of tea and i thought we could kick the year off with a little q a i did put up a little q a over on my instagram the other day i was going to do a couple one but i got a lot of questions geared towards just me so i was like okay craig can't actually do it with me today anyway so i'll just do a little Q&A by myself over here. Question number one, also just side note, I did get a few of like kind of similar questions so I've just kind of grouped those questions together. So question number one is, was I always into fitness or sport? This makes me laugh because my mom often reminds me how I used to like get her to write me notes to get out of PE. So as a child I was like quite active, I was always like playing with like my brother and sister and stuff but we were kind of like a very just a normal family where you know my mum was like always not in, I do not mean this in a bad way like my mum was the best cook and I was very fortunate for that um but she was like always feeding us like very hearty homemade meals and we kind of were like the type of kids that you know if we wanted fizzy pop we had fizzy pop so with that side of things like like I wasn't like in a family where we were all really sporty or anything or really into like really healthy good nutrition. When I went to school, I don't know if it was just my school, but it wasn't like very good at um like trying to help you find your niche with sport. It was like my memory of PE is like we would have played like done ribbons like do I don't even know if that's a thing and like we would have done a workout DVD and it was just like there was just no like help with trying like we done hockey it just wasn't very like exciting and I feel like you know so many children can relate because it's like oh if you don't like rugby or football well we don't know what you're gonna do and I stress this now that if you like you need to love what you're doing if you don't like running don't go running there is something out there that you will love so I was not really into fitness or any type of sports back in the day it's definitely something I have fallen in love with as I've gotten older question number two is how do I stay so motivated during a pandemic so motivation is a very weird thing but firstly, I just want to say that I am not super motivated all the time as much as I love training, as much as like training is such a big part of my life. I don't wake up every day and want to instantly work out. Like motivation is something that you definitely have to work at. So I think one of the main things that keeps me, vo keeps me motivated is definitely moving like the benefits of exercise away from just the physical benefits so we are all aware that many of us will like start working out or start training to lose weight or to look a certain way or whatever and that's how a lot of us get started and there's nothing wrong with that but I think that when there's so many other benefits to working out and we move, when we move past those physical benefits, you're like more likely to stick with it because I mean, like appearance isn't everything, but like for me, working out helps me so much mentally. If I've had like a really stressful day or if I'm feeling slightly anxious about things, when I like go in my own room, put my headphones on, get a good workout in, I feel like a weight has literally been lifted off my shoulders and I can't stress that enough. I think that's one thing, especially when there's so much like going on with this pandemic and like how stressed it can make you. And it's just like a time for me to completely switch off, get away th from things. And I think when you begin to view exercise like that, 
it definitely makes it far easier for me anyway to be able to work out that's why i always say to people like you know staying motivated is super hard and motivation is one of those things that comes and goes and solely relying on motivation to achieve your goals can be a problem because don't get me wrong motivation is important but what happens on those days when you just aren't feeling it and you're going to be relying on motivation to do you know like your motivation to come and do it like motivation isn't just something that's going to come and that's why i always stress to people to create a habit once we've created a habit it's much easier for it to last so you know those days where you really do want to work out but you drag yourself out of bed on those cold mornings when you're super tired and you do this over and over again it becomes so ingrained it then becomes a behavior that lasts and you have therefore created a habit it's the habit that keeps you doing what you're doing so i always say this little quote you know remember habits last motivation doesn't so exercise for me is basically a habit in my routine like something as simple as brushing my teeth so it is just the exercise has become such a habit for me that that's how I am able to keep it up and I then re reap the rewards from it and it's something that I just like to have in my routine okay guys next question is most embarrassing moment so my sister will literally be watching this video being like oh my god I can remember this do you know like one of those stories where you tell it and it's not really that funny to the people that you're telling it to but if you were there it was like really funny so I'm sorry if this is really not that embarrassing but it was embarrassing to me at the time so I was about 14 maybe 15 do you know that age where you like think you're all cool and you're like I had pink cowboy boots on pink cowboy boots so I'm like wearing these cool little heels thinking I'm all fancy we're going to this like cute restaurant for like my uncle's birthday or something it's like a buffet where you have to go up and get your own food and literally i'm like strutting my stuff going up thinking more cool in my heels and i literally slide on what i can i for some reason in my head i feel it's like a potato but i don't even know what it was and i slide and i don't just slide i like slide on my ass and then I fall towards this man who's like eating his dinner at the table and I'm literally like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Wow, I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. And do you know that age where like, that is like the worst thing because everyone stared at me. I'm also holding a plate that I think is now on the floor and I'm like, oh my gosh. And I remember getting up to this and like, that's the most embarrassing thing in my life. <laughs> it's probably not even that funny now, but that scarred me for a long time. I remember being so embarrassed about that. I had a few questions about what did I study and did I go to university, that type of thing. So. Basically, I just thought I would take you through. Basically, I went to school, but my school didn't have a sixth form in Northern Ireland. It could be the same in other places, but our schools are quite small compared to like the rest of the UK. And my school didn't have a sixth form. So I done first year to fifth year in this school. And I then was like, I didn't really take school seriously. I kind of just messed around and didn't really apply myself that well. I'm one of those people that I wasn't gifted with brains, but I definitely needed, I definitely need to work or something if I want it um so I just kind of messed around didn't get the best grades and then I decided that I would go to tech or college as a lot of you will know it and I've always had this interest in like healthcare or like um I always I used to always want to be a midwife or like that side of things so I then went to college and studied health and social care and I absolutely loved it. That style of learning definitely just was like so beneficial to me. I also think I got like a little scared, not scared, but like my sister is like quite academically smart. Like she was like, you know, like I always say she was like, she was quite brainy without having to apply herself where I feel like I really had to work for anything. And um, she had, you know, I had like, she'd done well at her GCSEs and then I had kind of done like a bit rubbish like I look back now it does not matter do not stress about those things and I had just kind of done a bit rubbish so I think then I went to college and was like I best try a little harder so I absolutely loved college met some amazing people and um, it definitely I think you know in college when you're studying something that you're so passionate about I'm still like that if I have a real interest in something I will just do so good at it like I think that's the same for most people but yeah so I went to college studied health and social care for like three years I did really want to go and become a nurse and I applied I got really good grades but at the time it was like do you know it felt like it felt like this anyway every single person was wanting to become a nurse and I remember like my tutor sitting down with me and saying like you know your grades are so good there's no reason why you wouldn't get in and we had like the practical experience and everything and basically I didn't get in and you know they were saying like at the time getting into nursing was just like literally a lottery so 
that kind of sucked I got a knock back I was like what am I gonna do and I think do you know that age where you're like you're supposed to know what you're doing and I really didn't all I ever knew was that I kind of wanted to be a midwife and I thought that was the route I would go down and that was it I didn't really give it any other thought but now when I sit back and think of things I should have just took some time out instead then I had done a module in psychology in college and I then applied I was advised to apply for psychology in uni and then I could switch over to nursing so this was my idea I then applied for psychology got into psychology and to be honest I've always had an interest in psychology like that sort of thing has always interested me and um like just understanding like humans behavior and stuff like I find that really fascinating so got into psychology and then I was going to change and I just ended up liking my course and I didn't but hindsight now I loved my degree I truly did and in my final year of uni I of psychology I got to like it was far more like interesting because you got to pick like the modules you actually wanted to do and I picked health psychology and I think that's one thing that I'm very passionate about and I love that side of things but getting a job here in that field is like very very hard and you know I think I made a lot of decisions back then just you know this thing where you grow up and you go to school and you do really well and then you should go to uni that was like the path that you're meant to follow and I do not advise that like for myself for my partner for my sister so many people around me so many people that I know go to uni because they think that's what you have to do or like you're being advised especially in schools and it's kind of like drummed into you that's the path you should take and I don't really think uni is for everybody and I came out and struggled to find a job and I'm very like like I worked really hard on my degree and to then just be like you put in all this work and you can't get a job and like to be up against so many people every year we just like kept getting knocked back and knocked back and knocked back so this is around the time that I was like finding my love for health and fitness and I think it was like I would like be so stressed out with trying to find a job and everything like that that this was like then my little became my little passion so I then decided to go and do my personal training and that is then when I was just like you know what health and fitness is for me and I just love that so much and it's like something I am so passionate about and I just love helping other people so that is kind of my educational journey uni is not the be all and end all and don't let anyone tell you it is unless you're gonna be like a doctor or something like that but I just feel like there's so many other paths to life and you do not need to follow life's generic path okay next question what are my goals for this year and like I am a big uh, advocate for not setting ourselves new year's resolutions because it puts a lot of pressure on ourselves and January's already quite a let's be honest shitty month but I just set myself little small goals that are like obtainable for the year so say for example I always say like instead of saying to yourself like I need to save a thousand pound by February or I need to save a big amount of money by a certain date I always say why don't you set like I need to put £10 away every week I need to put £20 away every week they are like small goals that are way more obtainable so for me it's literally just about focusing on myself again I have a lot of fitness related goals that I won't bore you with because I go on about that stuff probably far too much um I also would like to definitely read more I did start this last year and lockdown hit and I just got distracted with reading so it should have really encouraged me to read during lockdown but I did not know why I didn't so we're going to pick that one up again this year um I would also just like to take more time for my mental health because I'm very fortunate with the people that I'm surrounded with I have like a good support network around me but you know I just always think that there's things that I could be doing I am a natural warrior I'm an, an, and I am a natural stress head so any little thing in my life that is out of my routine I get a little bit like ah, I worry so much in bed at night so I just want to try and stop that so that's something I'm going to be working on this year I'm also going to be moving house hopefully soon and I would like to like be hoping that this new house will be like a fresh slate because I've had so many issues with this house and I just cannot wait to be bye bye house and into a new one so yeah I just have like some small goals I'd also really love to travel but 
just with the current situation I do not know even if that will happen but yes I have just some small goals like focusing on myself uh, making more time for my mental health and yeah just little things like that nothing too exciting next question is how do I deal with a down or bad day we all have down days we all have bad days I feel I've had quite a few bad days already just starting January <laughs> but what helps for me and I'm not saying this is help for everyone but what I normally do is sometimes I just have a good cry because if you're like me a good cry just makes me feel so much better and sometimes it's just important to ride out those emotions secondly I know this sounds really cliche but exercise is your friend and I like honest to goodness I cannot stress how much exercise helps me mentally getting some time away in my own little space to work out just if I'm having a bad day it just like is my way of blowing off steam. Another thing that I would do is just take some time out for you it doesn't really matter what it is it could be something like having a bath reading a book but just something that takes you away from the situation you just focus on yourself for a little bit and it kind of just distracts your mind from everything that is going on. Another thing that really helps me and something I cannot stress enough about is writing three things that you are grateful for. Now I do this every night my notes on my phone is literally like my diary and sometimes I think just taking the time out of your day to write like three things that you're grateful for it doesn't even have to be three it can be like one thing you're grateful for that day it just kind of like shows you that especially do you know whenever you're in this downward spiral of having like say you've had a few bad days you get into this like downward spiral where you think like everything in your life sucks and I'm guilty of that so I think by taking the time out to write a few things that you're grateful for it just shows you that like one bad day does not represent your whole life and there is things to be grateful for so yeah just a reminder that life gets hard it's not easy everyone has bad days and it's just important that you ride out these emotions and that you do things that help you in any way that you can next question where would i like to travel to this year um guys there's so many places i'd love to travel to but because i'm just needing a little mood boost cheer up you guys know what I'm going to say. I absolutely love Disney World. I don't know what it is, but I don't know if it's because I missed out when I was younger and didn't get to go to Disney World, but I am just the biggest fan of that place. It just makes me feel like I can be a kid and all my worries just seem so far away. So yes, my goal this year, I would love to be able to go back to Florida and Disney World and just have an absolute ball of a time. And I would love to take you guys along. Um, it's just, Mang and Craig's absolute favourite place. We love theme parks, we love water parks. I just feel it's a place that caters for me and Craig in so many ways. So if I could get there this year, I would be so freaking happy. Okay guys, I think this is going to be the last question because I don't want this to be like a big rambly, rambly, boring video. So um, this question is quite interesting because I actually had this from a few different people and it was, has your period ever, ever stopped because of working out? So let's talk about this question. I do not want people to think that exercise should make your period stop because that is not the case. Um, if your periods are stopping, I would just advise that you see your GP. The only time that exercise would stop your periods mm -hmm. is if you're putting too much uh, like stress on your body so too much intense physical activity can affect the hormones in your body um, which are responsible for your periods uh, losing too much body fat through intense exercise can cause your periods to stop remember body fat is needed in our bodies to protect our reproductive organs yeah really low levels of body fat can do this to some women and if this is the case, you'd be advised to reduce your level of intense physical activity um, just to see if this makes a change. Also, please just make an appointment with your GP. Um, I personally have never experienced this and you know, your period is your body's way of like knowing that everything is okay. And if you are reaching like low levels of body fat and putting too much uh, stress on your body, obviously it's gonna affect your body in some way. So please just be mindful of that. If, if you are losing your period, but it's nothing to do with like 
you know you're not working out too intensely or you don't feel like you've like low levels of body fat or anything like that then just still go and see your gp just to get some proper advice but hopefully that answers that question for you okay guys so that is going to go ahead and conclude today's video um thank you so much for watching hopefully it wasn't too boring hopefully you got to know a little bit more about me i will try and do another q a soon and i do have plans of doing uh doing a couples q a with craigie next time i would really really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel just so that you guys get to see all my future stuff um please give the video a big thumbs up and i will catch you in the next one guys enjoy your week love you so much bye